You're listening to the Intuitive Souls Podcast. I am your host, Tara Caruso, and this podcast is designed to educate, inspire, and enlighten. Let's wake up together. Hey guys, and welcome to the show. So before we even start, I really want to thank every single one of you that is taking the time out of your busy day to write these amazing reviews on iTunes. I read every single one of them and it just really makes me so happy and so pumped to be doing this for you guys and to see that it is helping you guys on your spiritual path. And I just want to also take a minute that if you are enjoying this podcast, if it's bringing you value, if you're enjoying your weekly woo, please be sure to leave a review on iTunes. It helps, you know, get this podcast out there to the people that will benefit from it. So again, you know, I know we all live very hectic, busy lives, but if you can, I would really appreciate it. And it just means so much to me. Again, guys, thank you so much for all the love. It, I, I'm just so pumped that you guys like it. So today, I had the pleasure of talking to a wonderful, wonderful lady. Her name is Julie Medley, and she is a psychic medium. And we talked about mediumship. So really, I, I'm i really just so fascinated. Not only am I a medium, but I love learning about it. And I love learning, you know, about our souls and how we connect with spirit. So she is just a wealth of knowledge in this area. So I was so pleased to have her on. She's an absolute sweetheart. And she really brought a lot of knowledge you know, about the history of spiritualism and mediumship in the United States and I just loved our conversation. So before we head to the interview, I wanted to do a essential oil crystal and a oracle card of the week. So today's essential oil is ginger and ginger holds no reservations. This oil has a purpose and will fulfill it. Ginger powerfully persuades individuals to be fully present and participate in life. It teaches that to be successful in life, one must be wholly committed to it. Ginger addresses deep patterns of victim mentality, which is evidenced by feelings of powerlessness, believing everything is outside one's control, refusing to take responsibility for life, or blaming life circumstances on other people, or outside influences. Victims feel stuck as they decentralize or disown responsibility and blame others for their misfortunes. So I, um, (laughs) to be completely honest, I, I like ginger, um, the smell of ginger, believe it or not. And I do like to keep it on hand during cold and flu season. Um, I actually, I put it on my husband's feet um, when he was having a stomach ache and he said that it subsided it. So ginger really is an amazing essential oil. I think it's not a really well-known oil as well. So I definitely wanted to give it a shout out because it has some amazing benefits. And today, the crystal of the week, I have been, (laughs) I have been going for months without talking about this particular crystal. And I'm always like, it will pop into my head at like the weirdest times, like when I'm in the shower or driving or something. And it's like, oh, I should, I should put that crystal out there. Because guys, this particular crystal was kind of my eye opener for the power that crystals hold. It was the one that really just kind of like opened up my eyes to, um, different worlds, to be completely honest, and that spirit is always around us. So this stone, I actually did speak about it uh, with the at the Crystal Awards show with Michael Sclafani, and it is apotholite. So apotholite has a high water content, which makes it very efficient conductor of energy and a carrier of the Akashic Records. Its presence in a room enhances the energy as it is a powerful vibrational transmitter. Apotholite creates a conscious connection between the physical and the spiritual realms. 
During out-of-body journeys, it keeps a strong connection with the physical body, allowing transformation to be transmitted into the spiritual realm, into the physical. So I want to point out that I bought this tiny little piece of apophyllite, right? I don't know why. When, When I go crystal shopping, I don't even look at like what the attributes of the crystal are straight up. I go and I put my hands, um, I put my right hand on top of, you know, maybe two to three inches on top of where the crystal is laying. And once I feel like a pull or a, or a tingling sensation, I know that that's the crystal that I'm supposed to get. So this crystal was the only one that was like vibrating under my hand at like such an intense speed. And I didn't read about it. You know, I just, I just knew that that was the crystal I had to go home with and I brought it home, cleared it obviously. And then I meditated with it and I was like, what the what? I was like, where did I just go? So guys, this is an intense crystal. And we actually like talked about it on uh, the crystal awards show a couple weeks ago, but I I've been meaning to bring it on and tell you guys about it because it is such an epic stone. I gotta tell you, it's so intense and it's so, it's really good for meditation. So definitely check out Apophyllite. And today, the I pulled from my Mermaids and Dolphins core cards by Doreen Virtue, and I pulled the Waves of Prosperity card. And it says, new abundance and exciting opportunities wash over you now. I'm like so pumped when I get like new, like this kind of card with opportunities and stuff. I'm like so pumped when I got it. Like I pulled it and I was like, yes, someone's getting an (laughs) epic opportunity. So guys, whoever this card is for, congratulations and seriously, enjoy the abundance, enjoy the opportunity, allow it to flow and just manifest into something amazing. So I want to just say again, like seriously, I don't think you guys understand how grateful I am for all of the iTunes reviews. If you are listening to this episode, feel free to screenshot it on your Insta stories and tag me so I could see and I'll I'll definitely, you know, share it to my stories as well. But let's get to the show again. This is all about mediumship and I sit down with Julie Medley and I hope you guys enjoy the show. Julie, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, how you found yourself on the path to mediumship? Of course, Erica, thank you so much for having me. I really enjoy your podcast and I I think you're doing great things for people. Oh, thank you. um, So my name is Julie Medley and I'm a medium. I'm an intuitive. I've been these things for, it seems like a long time now. I didn't always understand them as a child, what was happening, but I had a um, difficult life circumstance about 10 years ago now. And uh, through that difficult life circumstance that involved my mother, my stepdad, my sister, and uh, I had a similar situation with my husband at the time. Uh, between these uh, life-altering, life-shaking things, mm-hmm. I turned to counseling. I uh, was busy with school at the time and work and raising a family. So uh, I turned to counseling. I turned to painting. I had an amazing religion class at college. And these things started forming for me into an awareness that there's something that's so much deeper that's guiding each and every one of us if we just start to pay attention. So I continued with school and uh, was totally turned on to the mediumship aspect and started taking courses Every year, um, while going to school, raising a family, and working, you know how it is for women, you know, 
So I did that for years. And then uh, my husband and I had an opportunity to move a year and a half ago. And here's, I thought that I would start working on my mediumship and intuition as a career, as a business later on in my life, like maybe at retirement age. Mm -hmm. But when I moved here, I, I, I don't know. I just um, wasn't able to find a job. I started thinking to myself, well, I have this ability. Why not start developing it, working on it, and doing it now? So I've been doing that, and doors have been opening. It's just been wild. So my timing wasn't spirit's timing. Spirit's timing is now. It's supposed to be happening for me now. Wow. So I'm going with that. I'm riding that wave, and it's... It's wonderful. So thanks for asking. That's who I am in a nutshell. <laughs> so you've known, you've kind of, you didn't jump into the mediumship, so to speak. You, you grew with it. You learned from it. You did classes. You really took the time to learn the, the, the craft of mediumship before you even decided to come out to the public and offer readings. Well, yes, and no. I was very excited at first. I, um, on a whim, took a psychic development class, mm -hmm. and that was during that very difficult time. And in the class, the instructor pointed her finger at me and said, you go straight to mediumship. What? Wow. I said, what, what, what is that? And that kind of, you know, it, it kind of scared me. I was a little bit nervous as to what that was. So I started looking it up. And the next class I had with her, I said, I'm a bit afraid of that because I've been taught that that's not a good thing to speak with spirits. And wow. she was very wise. And she said, speaking with people that have passed on, loved ones that have passed on, will bring you closer to God in your walk on this earth. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that, that is a lot of, that is something to really sink in. So, you know, with this, with her saying, you know, you go straight to mediumship, did you, mm -hmm. like, what did you do afterwards? Did you try to channel someone for her? Or how did you know that you, this connection to spirit was real? Well, I wondered in the back of my mind, is she just being nice? Is she just, you know, encouraging me because that was her class and that, you know, maybe that's just what she wanted to be and encourage her? Right. So I started testing. I started asking, if this is true, then tell me something about the next person I'll meet. If this is true then I believe the next person that will call me on the phone is, and I started testing. And more often than not, I would just have that jaw drop of amazement. This is real. This is wow. shit. <laughs> wow. so, yeah. So, uh, you know, that's more of an intuition thing that I was doing. And then I started telling people I was so excited at the beginning. And there's such a thing in this work as um, beginner's luck. And you just, you just, it's just flowing out of you. Yes. Um, so I had a, re I was telling everybody and so excited and I was in a dark time of my life and I had this amazingness on the other side. So of course I wanted to focus on the amazing. And I started telling everybody and I had one reading where someone asked me um, about their profession in life. And my feeling at the time was the direction that they were going in wasn't the best direction for them. And I let them know that this wasn't exactly, um, oh, what, what, what do I want? it's not a prediction, but a possibility. Right. I let them know. But um, she came back to me months later and said, I enrolled in the course that will start me on that profession. And I just wanted you to know. And she was upset with me. And so I thought to myself, I better get some work under my belt because I don't want to, 
I just, I don't want to upset people. I want to help people. I want to uplift people. So I started um, being a little, I, I started letting it sit on the back burner. It never left me though, Erica, ever. It's a passion from my heart. So wow. it's always there. But I thought, well, while I'm raising my kids, going to school and working, I'll take one workshop a year and only do readings if it presents itself to me. Okay. So it kind of went to the the back burner, but now it's very present. Wow. That's so, you sound a lot like my teacher, believe it or not. My teacher, Anna Rolesko, she, um, she is actually very high up in the school education system. She works at the superintendent's office and she found spirit, like I believe 10, 10 or 11 years ago. And she just always kind of kept it on the bath back burner, but went to workshops and everything. And now that she's retiring, she's just so excited about embarking on this journey into, you know, teaching psychic development and mediumship and doing, you know, workshops and stuff. And you sound so much like her. It's so, it's so funny how that happens. <laughs> what was her name again? Anna Rolesko. Anna Rolesko. Yes. She is very, she's an excellent medium. She, um, she is affiliated with Janet Nahovic. She is a minister at the Journey Within Church. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it's just funny how a lot of people, and I notice because I do a class every week that a lot of people find this intuition and find their connection to spirit while life is happening. And they always end up like just falling in love with it, just like falling in love with the mediumship and learning about it and everything like that. Um, What were some of the, um, what are some of your favorite workshops that you took as a medium? Oh, such a good question. Uh, Mavis Patilla as a teacher is my absolute uh, top-notch favorite. Okay. She fills the room like no other. I love Lisa Williams. Her style on platform is, it's engaging, it's entertaining, and it's um, legitimizing. It's, it's, it's evidential, and I just, I love her style of platform. Okay. I've heard very good things about Mavis Patilla. Oh my gosh. She's just, I've I've never seen anyone that can soothe an entire crowd of people. Wow. (laughs) She's just incredible. If you ever get a chance, I don't know if you've been, Arthur Finley College. Yeah, that's on my to-do list. That's on, that's on my 2020 (laughs) to-do list, believe it or not. Awesome. Definitely. That's something that every, I think everybody should be able to do. <laughs> oh yeah. Just, just the history of our, uh, the Arthur Finley I'm like obsessed with. Oh yeah. yeah. And, it's just, and it's just, the rooms are, I stayed up in a turret up above okay. and it, I just had, I had to walk all these stairs at night and it was kind of dark and it was kind of um, just really cool. Just such a cool thing. Oh, that's so awesome. That's so awesome. So when, you know, this whole decade, as you've been progressing and stuff like that, what have been some tools that you have used or that you have found helpful in your connection with spirit and, you know, just embarking into your own spirituality? Well, in the middle of my college journey, I started thinking to myself, people find this work to be they find frauds in this work. They find tricksters. People just stop for money. So I started thinking to myself, I really do not want to be considered fake or fraudulent. And that, that was very important to me. So I decided to go back to school and obtain more education. And the thing that seemed to fit the field, I had to kind of put the pieces together, but um, me, um, Women, gender, and sexuality seem to fit. So I um, obtained that degree. And with that degree, I've seen a theme running through mediumship and feminism, where women need to have their voices heard. They've been oppressed for many, many years. There's been the 
first, second, third, and now we're in the fourth wave of uh, feminism with the Me Too, the Time's Up, you know, all of these things are about women being seen and heard yes. being able to step up. So I, I, that's really stuck out to me, that, that interwoven theme between the two, the um, Fox sisters and the uh, convention where women were doing the suffrage movement and bringing up their Bill of Rights for property. That all happened in Hydesville Park, close to the same, they were like within miles of each other. They, the two uh, knew each other, Lady State, uh, State and, um, Lady Coat, I'm getting her name mixed up. Um, but one of the primary people in the feminist movement at the time was also a uh, medium herself and attended circles regularly. So I just found that interesting. That's one thing. Um, another thing, spiritualist church has, um, I don't quite adhere to everything that they hold dear, but the fellowship, the learning, all of that is very important. I still love to sing the old hymns. I still, I still find oh, yeah. that quite, quite, quite a soother for the soul. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's so, I, I love how you weave feminism with mediumship. That is, that is, so I've never even thought of it that way. I really haven't, uh, that, that they really do tie in together a lot because I mean, I don't know, like, I don't know the, the statistics, but I feel like there are a lot more female mediums than male mediums. There are, it, it yeah. very much outweighs. And the more we support one another in this type of work, the better off we are because we tend to be lone wolves um, as energy workers. Right. So the more we support each other and we're all trying our very best to do very good work for other people and to lift the vibration of the planet. Yes. So as we support each other, we can do that. But if we continue on our own, alone, it's mm-hmm. easy for us to fall by the wayside and to lose not the passion for the work, but the, um, the, the dedication that it takes. But with sisterhood, support, that dedication, that, um, what word am I looking for? That uh, fellowship, <laughs> female, mm-hmm. female ship, put it that way. That's, that's there. That aspect is there. That needed connection is there. Yeah, I I 100% agree. And I, I wanted you to come on because a big thing with me is when I first realized my connection to spirit and that I, I was, in fact, you know, grabbing evidential information from spirit, I... I, I went into this and I just didn't even know where to start. So I went and I did a workshop with a Lily Dale um, evidential medium and I just started really diving into it. And it really is something that the, the whole concept of mediumship, it's, it's pretty unknown if you really think about it in today's terms where it's a lot of people think that it's like a generational gift that's given to you. And it's, I, when I came into the mediumship world, I was kind of like pushed back in my seat. Like, well, there's a lot more to this than you think, Mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot to be learned. There are a lot of investments that you have to make in order to really educate yourself on spiritualism and growing your connection to spirit. And I know a lot of people, um, you know, definitely in the online world, I, I notice more and more that there's a lot of people that do, you know, free, you know, mediumship reads that are not, they, they're mediumistic, but they're not true, you know, mediums where they go and they study the art mm-hmm. of mediumship. And I wanted to come, you know, I wanted you to come on because I know that you invest and I've seen that you went to Lilydale and I know that you do workshops and I really wanted to, you know, talk about what it is to be a medium and how you really do like even people that have been doing this for 10, 20 years, they still go to workshops every single year to deepen their connection. 
Right. Absolutely. It's important to try to stay as current as you can, to learn as much as you can. But with that, Erica, I want to make sure that pe- that your listeners, mm-hmm. uh, I want to invite them to the understanding that not everything will be perfect. And yes. especially not every time. And I think we hold ourselves to such a standard that it could discourage us. But yeah. practicing, and if you can every day, that's important and helpful, learning to trust yourself and what you're receiving. But um, a perfect reading is rare. It just yeah. is. And that's, that's just being truthful about it. I would love to say every reading I ever do or every reading that you ever have will be absolutely wonderful and perfect. Right. But there, it, it takes time and it takes care. Yeah. And you just really, the biggest thing about this is just trusting what you get and just saying it, just saying it, even if it doesn't make sense. Right. (laughs) Yeah, that's my, and, and you are so right when it comes to like this, the whole concept of mediumship is like, you see so many mediums, you know, on TV and, you know, doing these massive crowds and, and reading, you know, and you have to remember that a lot of this is edited. (laughs) You know, I'm not saying that these mediums that we see on TV are not mediums because they are, they're excellent at what they do, but it requires a level of dedication that I realize that like not many people have, you really need to be dedicated to it. And you need to understand that, you know, I've seen personally, I've, I've seen, beautiful world renowned mediums do okay readings. <laughs> yep, me too. I have to say yeah. Absolutely. You know, I I have like and these are the best mediums in the world. These are the top mediums in the world where you know, I'll see them channel once and I'm like my jaw is dropping cuz they're grabbing so much information. And it's so evidential and so soul speaking. And then other times it's like, huh, that was something. <laughs> you know? So that, the person didn't receive. Yeah. Right. It really is though, because Janet Nahovic, if you, if you are in the medium shit, you know, if you are a medium and you know, you know, about medium shit, Janet Nahovic is a very well-known medium and she owns the journey within church in New Jersey. I'm actually going to be taking a couple of workshops there this summer, but her thing is what she says is a good mediumship read is a cocktail and it's all about the ingredients and the ingredients are spirit, the medium and the client. Yes, yes. And it all needs to be mixed up and it all needs to be working well in order to really receive a beautiful message. Yes. I had a message at uh, Arthur Finley College with one of the famous mediums there. And uh, he did spirit art and he was wonderful. And he brought through my grandmother for me. Mm-hmm. And he said, your grandmother would love to have cocoa and cake at the table and she would love to talk to people about what was going on in their lives well yes it was true that my grandmother loved to sit at the table and talk to other people about what was going on in their lives but it was tea and it was pie ah yeah there's just that little slight yeah if if, if I didn't wasn't able to make that little leap mentally, or if I wasn't um, focused that day, then I would have said no. It's just that little twist of communication that right. um, needs to be as, cor- as correct as possible. Yeah. So. And, and this is the thing with mediumship. And this is what I like try to tell people, like even before readings, it's like, you're giving me a, a thousand piece puzzle, right? Yeah, I'm getting a thousand piece puzzle and I'm dropping it and, and it's being dropped on the floor. And the mediumship read for me is finding the sides, 
right? Which are, you know, the, the gender and the, you know, connection and the evidence and kind of trying to make this puzzle out of all these pieces of evidence I'm grabbing. Yes. Right? Like, that's what I feel yeah. like a reading is, is like, you're getting dropped a massive puzzle and you're just trying to figure out how to put it together because I might see something that, you know, I, I say what it is, but it's something totally different, but it makes sense. Right. So when you said that, I was like, yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's, it's, you know, he gave the information, but he, um, he, he brought it out in a different way. Yes. It doesn't mean it's incorrect. Right. Right. Exactly. exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, so I do have a lot, I do, we have some mediums here and we also have some people that are just kind of diving into their own, you know, spiritual nature and, you know, wanting to connect to their soul. So what are some things, what are three things that you would say a beginning medium or someone who even feels like, you know, they are empathic or intuitive? What are three things that you would tell them right now to help them on their journey? Well, you mentioned the word soul, and I think um, right now where I'm at with soul is <clears throat> a lot of people in our field talk about intention, mm. and intention. So I've been lately considering why not set the intention for everything rather than just my mediumship work. Why not set it for every single thing, feeling within, um, connected to spirit, setting an intention and seeing what happens. So we're all on a journey. We're all learning together. Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. and so that's where I've been with that. But as for beginner advice, mm -hmm. um, what I talked or, you know, even people that have been on the journey a little bit, I talked uh, in the beginning of our time together about how I tested the spirit, how I tested things to make sure that they made sense to me. Yeah. So I would definitely advise finding out if this is true for you. So see um, if you can predict a game or if you can predict the outcome of a test result, like to the number, the percentage of a test that you may be um, applying for. Yeah. Um, Anything like that that you can do to build trust within yourself, that's, that's an A number one uh, tip to do. Another thing is to make a conscious decision of how far you want to share with other people. Maybe you just want to share with the intermediate family and friends. Maybe you want to let everybody know, but it's your heart's decision. So take your time with that. Um, and then I think another thing would be to learn to adjust the faucet of the flow of information. So I learned early on that to be in another person's energetic space is morally wrong unless invited. Mm. So praying over another person or intending good for another person or coming into their aura or uh, energetic field. Yeah. Is just, it's just really not the right thing to do. And it's beginners do it all the time. They don't, they're not really aware that they're in the other person's energetic field, but they just kind of are there. Yeah. So learning how to turn that off. Mm -hmm. And I did that through the third eye of um, being aware of that closing and opening and closing and going through that process a lot so that I could start because that full flow can feel overwhelming when you go out to live your daily life and you're being told this person's going through a divorce and this person's extremely sad because their dad right. is gone. and it just the flow of information can be too much and you might not exactly know what to do with that. But if you start to learn to taper that back a little bit, just by even asking in your heart, please reduce the information flow a little bit, mm -hmm. that, that will start getting you back to an even keel and you'll start having 
um, driplets of information, droplets of information that come in at a more reasonable pace. And eventually you'll start to control when you are open to receive information when you're not. Some will leak every now and then because something important uh, mm -hmm. may need to be uh, told to you. But um, for the most part, you can open and close. So I think that's an important thing too. That is important because there is really such a thing as psychic burnout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Um, and it really is. It is so much about intention. A lot of the times when you're an empath and you're just a highly mm -hmm. sensitive person to begin with, you will, you will know when someone's having a bad day and it's not like you're psychically reading them or in their energy, I want to speak. But mm -hmm. some of this comes naturally, especially if you're a highly sensitive person. But be aware of psychic burnout. You know, we all have the ability to be psychic. We all have clairs. It's just learning how to strengthen them and you will get wiped out. You will, you will be so tired, especially with mediumship readings. I do want to point that out because you are raising your vibration to such a high level to, in order to receive the information that you really need to be aware of that. I remember my first workshop, it was like an 11 to five and we were channeling for like, I want to say three hours, like on and off. And I remember, and it was only five minutes to my house. And Julia, I can't tell you, I was so tired driving home. Oh, yeah. I was yeah. exhausted. I, I didn't, I, I remember walking into my house and I looked at my husband and I was like, I haven't been this exhausted since the kids were newborns. Mm -hmm. Like it's really exhausting. <laughs> These issues are being studied today and Hopefully we'll find answers, but yes, mediums do tend to have um, autoimmune deficiencies and definitely that level of tired that you're talking about. Yeah. So thank goodness it's being studied today. Thank goodness. Yeah, yeah. I saw that you posted that because I was like, wow, it's good to know. It's definitely yeah. good to know because you learn how to pace yourself, I feel like. Right. Yeah. I've always, Edgar, all the way back to Edgar Casey. Mm. And the sleeping prophet, he said three readings a day, and even that is a bit much. So that is a bit much. It yeah. is. Exactly. I remember, yeah. yeah. Even with two readings, well, two mediumship readings for me, I'm tired. I'm yeah. really tired. And right. th and if Edgar Casey, if you guys don't know who Edgar Casey is, please look him up. He's basically the uh, the, the, the Tony Stockwell of mediumship. <laughs> like, <laughs> He's wonderful. I read some of um, I read some books about him, and it really he did all of his readings in a trans state. Yes. So it, it's really just so I'm just more I'm just so into learning about it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm much more I, I love learning about it. Like I'm planning to go to um, the Fox sisters' house this oh, summer wow. with the kids, and and I'm just that's. I, it really, once you like dive into the whole spiritualism, spiritual uh, mediumship, you learn the history of it and you're just amazed. Yes. We've had amazing people go before us and clear paths. So it's not all on our shoulders to make sure that people see it as legit and not something to fear. Right. Yeah. I, I do feel a sense of weight with that, that that's uh, part of my mission as I work in the field that I help reduce fears and that I help educate people as to what it actually is. Right. So, yeah. In support of my fellow mediums and energy workers. Yeah. Yeah. I, you do such a good job too, because it's like I said, I just, I feel like I don't want to say there's a stigma. There is a stigma around mediumship, but there's also, nobody really knows, <laughs> you know, they don't really know that it's all energy. You know, yeah. it, it's not, it's not, we're not talking to ghosts. We're not, you know, doing anything other than simply reading energy. Right. Right. You know, and when you debunk it like that, I feel like it's just less scary. You know, mm -hmm. it makes a little more sense to the people that, you know, might have a fear-based mentality. Exactly. Yes. And we still come from that, you know, the 
the witch trials and the Puritanism in our country, that's still in our DNA. Yeah. Anything we can do to clear that and help that, the better we are. Absolutely. Julie, thank you so much for coming on today. If you guys want to check Julie out, she has a wonderful uh, Facebook page where she she talks about, you know, her life and she, she shares such interesting information. So be sure to check her out. And Julie, thanks again for coming on. Thank you, Erica. It's been a pleasure and goodbye to all your listeners. Thank you for listening today.